Tonight on our news, a tropical storm warning now in effect for Grand Bahama and Bimini as Hurricane Ian makes its way north. We are tracking the tropics as tornadic activity, coastal flooding and close to 10 inches of rain expected in the next five hours. Also, parents and teachers frustrated with flooding in southern New Providence. Tonight, they're speaking up. Plus, we'll tell you why the judge set to hear Adrian Gibson's corruption trial was asked to step down. And later, youth empowerment taking shape in a newly formed mentorship program. A tropical storm warning is now in effect for Grand Bahama and Bimini, putting island residents on high alert. Welcome to our news and thank you for joining us. I'm Italia Hall. As Hurricane Ian moves north, some coastal flooding and possible tornadic activity expected over in Grand Bahama and Bimini. Bertha McDermott has the details. A tropical storm warning has been issued for Grand Bahama and Bimini as Hurricane Ian is now tracking slightly east, putting West Grand Bahama in danger of getting tropical storm winds. Met department officials calling an emergency press conference this evening. We also anticipating um, tornado activity as those banks come ashore. So we will issue a uh, severe weather warning once we see those come into um, play. The emergency operating center will be operated and the command center will also be activated as well as shelters are expected to be opened by Wednesday morning. Minor coastal flooding is also expected but officials say evacuations may not be necessary just yet. West Grand Bahama Administrator Ricardo Ferguson. We know the, the rain is expected to be from, we're expected to get heavy rains from as of tonight, going into Thursday, in particular summer, I've, I've heard some say Friday mornings. Around 20 shelters are set and ready to go on the island. Ferguson says residents have been notified and tarps were provided for those still reeling from the devastation of Hurricane Dorian back in 2019. Ferguson is advising residents to be prepared. Meanwhile, this resident says Grand Bahamians aren't taking any chances. They're going to get uh, well prepared, um, but for this one, it seems as if we're only going to get the feeder bands. But still, I, I think most of us are not, we're, we're not taking it for granted. Frank Hagen says his home is adequately stocked with food and water. We are praying, God's willing, that we're, we're going to be, we're going to be okay, as we're hoping along this line. But if, if, hap, if it need be, uh, if some of our friends have to relocate to where we are, fine. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Thanks, Berthony. And standing by in the Weather Center is meteorologist Greg Thompson, who's tracking Hurricane Ian as it moves north. Greg, what does this mean for residents in the north? Well, residents, in particular Grand Bahama and the Bimini area, expected to experience some tropical storm conditions. Strong winds and some feeder bands will be affecting that area. What a difference 24 hours make. This system is actually was supposed or forecasted to stay just to the west of the west coast of Florida, but a jog ever so slightly back towards the right or east has put most of South Florida now in tropical storm conditions, and that uh, encompasses portions of the Northwest Palmas, as I mentioned, Grand Bahama, as well as the Bimini area. In consultation with the National Hurricane Center, that's the reason why we up those um, uh, tropical storm warnings for the Northwest portions of the Northwest Palmas. Feeder bands will continue to spread across us late tonight and into tomorrow. The worst day is expected to be tomorrow as a lot of this is going to be moving as the system continues to track towards the north. So tropical storm conditions once again in effect for Bimini as well as Grand Bahama and expected to see some significant flooding with this system. Italia? Thanks so much, Greg. And while many are evacuating portions of western Florida, as Hurricane Ian bears down on that state, some Bahamians and cities in the direct path of the storm are hunkering down. Berthry McDermott spoke with one of them, an RTV employee who says he's riding out the storm in Fort Myers. It was a fight for essentials like water and gas in the Florida area, according to Chris Don Saunders, who says it's a different feeling compared to preparation at home. I know some people found it hard to find water. Um, we was able to find some, but to be honest with you, they, they were coming off the shelves really, really fast. People were um, crowding gas stations, I guess, stocking up on fuel. So it's, it's definitely a different vibe here than it is over there. Despite the challenge, Saunders, who is the RTV studio and field production coordinator, says they're adequately prepared, adding that the plan is to get more water as they anticipate a power outage. He says they're equipped with a backup generator and has filled the car with gas. 
Hurricane Ian is expected to be a powerful Category 3 storm when it crashes into Florida. Some areas were given mandatory evacuation warnings. There wasn't a mandatory evacuation for the acres as of yet, um, or at least for this part of the acres where I'm, where I'm staying. But we did fill the cars with fuel in case we do have to make last-minute evacuations, and I guess we'll just drive. Saunders says it seems Floridians were more relaxed when news broke that a hurricane was headed their way. We asked him if he's concerned about the structural soundness of buildings in the area. To be honest, yeah, it kind of is. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to say it out loud. Um, well, the good part is where I'm staying, the land is is elevated because I think the way their building codes are set up um, from looking at the houses, everybody is built up. So I guess that's that's a good thing. So reporting for our news. I'm Thanks, Bertany. The heavy rains this week leaving many New Providence communities with nagging floodwaters. Residents near the Carlton Francis Primary School say they are fed up with the continuous flooding. Our Jamila Mizek has reaction tonight. It has been an ongoing issue for years. As you can see, inches of water fills the road at Carlton Francis Primary School. Today, parents and teachers are expressing their frustration and they say this issue must be resolved sooner rather than later. When our news arrived at the Carlton Francis Primary School, one woman could be seen carrying a child on her back through inches of water. It is an issue that is all too familiar to many who have had to come to the school over the years. Teacher Naria Leary says some days the situation is much worse as the water sometimes takes days to settle. Every time it rains, the absentees are to the, to the top. Um, last week we had a teacher who said a car computer died because of the water. This morning when I came in, the children literally were walking with their shoes and their socks in their hands. This is an issue. Shop stored at the school, Linda Forbes says she can remember this being an issue as far back as 2004 when she was first assigned to the school. We need somebody, anybody who knows what they are doing because what they're doing is they'll come here they'll drain the water, but they're not, the, the, the mud or whatever's left behind is going right back into the drain. Something they need to come and investigate properly. Parents also expressing their frustration on social media. We also met resident Rita Cartwright, who experienced car troubles from driving through the water. I watch cars stall out my car now. Same thing. What am I supposed to do now? How I can get to work? How I can bring my kids to school? I watch children trying to hop over the water, falling on. They can wait till someone fall and hit their head and die for them to really fix this water drain. The school gate have, I don't know how much entrance. You all know the situation and they open the back gate for people to get through. See your parents bring their train on their neck just to bring them to school. People walking through puddles of water. Parents have to buy these things. Reporting for Our News. I'm Jamila Misik. Now our news asks the Minister of Works, Alfred Sears, for a response on the long-standing issue during today's weekly cabinet briefing. Sears says he saw pictures of the flooding near Carlton Francis Primary School. The Works Minister adds that he's been advised that the issue is being addressed. It's not only Carlton Francis, but also C.V. Bethel, um, where you have potted water. Um, and the only way you can get through is by a vehicle or by taking off your shoes and walking Jane. through the water. So I'm advised that that's being addressed Still now. to come on our news, the coroner investigates the fatal shooting of a wanted suspect and the $1,000 worth of edibles landing a Grand Bahama woman behind bars. Plus, the Attorney General talks international compliance as the Bahamas faces a possible listing. It's all coming up when our news returns. His Majesty's coroner is tonight investigating a shooting incident that has left a man dead. Megan Shepard was on the scene as police reveal what led to that fatal shooting.
A once wanted man is now dead following a police involved shooting in the Gamble Heights community. Police press liaison Chief Superintendent Kristen Skippings telling media on scene. Officers received intelligence that the wanted suspect was seen at a residence on Sunrise Road. And the wanted suspect on seeing the officers engaged the officers and was fatally shot. Police recovered a handgun along with ammunition from the deceased. Chief Superintendent Skippings could not reveal the identity of the deceased until next of kin is notified, but she said he appears to be in his early 20s. He was wanted in connection with a number of armed robberies. Police sending this warning to those who choose a life of crime. The police is here to maintain law and order. We are here to preserve the peace. We are here to protect life and property. And those persons who fail to obey law and order, this could be their fate. Police officers have families who love them and who care for them. And we are here to guard and protect the good citizens of this Bahamas that we love. And we will continue to do exactly what we're doing. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. Thanks, Megan. Now to news from Grand Bahama Police arresting a woman after finding edibles in a South Bahamia home on Monday evening. According to reports, officers went to a home on Woods Rogers Drive in South Bahamia around 6 p.m. when they saw a woman at a bedroom window on the second floor. Police say the woman fled once she saw the officers. That's when they breached the front door of the home where they found three other women inside. Inside the home, they found a wooden chest that contained a green plastic bag. Police reported that inside the bag was 42 packages of edibles, including 26 trolley cherry bombers, nine sour bright crawlers, four edible gummy candies, and three trolley slurpy sour bright crawlers. Now the suspected drugs have an estimated street value of $1,050. A woman was arrested in connection with the incident. The judge assigned to hear the corruption trial of FNM MP Adrian Gibson has been asked to step down because her late husband once served as a PLP cabinet minister. Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson, the widow of Peter Bethel, who died from cancer two decades ago, will preside over Gibson's case if she does not accept the recusal application. Gibson is accused of enriching himself through the grant of contracts to the water and sewage company corporation rather while serving as its executive chairman from 2018 to 2021. The FNM MP and his alleged co-conspirators have denied charges of bribery, fraud and money laundering at their arraignment before senior justice Bernard Turner on Friday. When Turner said the matter would be heard by Grant Thompson, Muriel Ducille, Casey, who represents MP Gibson and two other defendants, said he would prefer if another judge presided over the case. Ducille formally made the recusal application today when the parties appeared before Grant Thompson for a trial date to be fixed. He said he was not suggesting that Grant Thompson was unfit to hear the case, but if she presided over the matter, there would be a perception of bias due to the political affiliation of her deceased husband. Now, Grant Thompson is set to give her decision on the recusal application on Thursday. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com.
When our news comes back from the break, why the Bahamas may soon find itself on the European Union's list of non-compliant jurisdictions. Plus, Italia coming up in sports for you tonight. We'll tell you how local baseball is getting excited as a under-23 tournament with Kristen, the new baseball stadium. We'll also tell you how Frank Rutherford feels after having a new subdivision named in his honor. That's all coming up in sports. And later, youth empowerment taking shape in a new mentorship program. We'll tell you all about it when our news returns. This is our news. Welcome back. The Bahamas may soon be back on the European Union's list of non-compliant jurisdictions. Prime Minister Philip Davis raised it at a recent speech at the United Nations General Assembly today. Today, rather, Attorney General Ryan Pinder provided some insight on where do we go from here. Marlena Leonard reports. The Attorney General says the non-cooperative jurisdiction status stems from issues and discrepancies identified by the European Union through its Code of Conduct Group in our Commercial Entities Substance Requirements Act, or CESRA. What it does is it requires certain economic substance within the jurisdiction, depending on the type of uh, business you are. Now, that piece of legislation was drafted in 2018, uh, brought into force January 1st, 2019. Uh, you would know by those dates, uh, this is this is an FNM administration. With respect to the actual implementation that the FNM administration did, uh, clearly it was fundamentally flawed. Um, it was in a state where it was non-compliant, clearly. They had three and a half years to put in place a compliant regime of economic substance reporting and failed to do it. Although the government was notified of the issues late last year, the matter wasn't resolved before the review in April 2022. We were uh, notified of the non-compliance late last year. We gave our assurances that we would try to work with the EU. Uh, clearly with a fundamental flaw, it takes some time to fix. Uh, and we were just unable to, 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 to get over all of the hurdles in time for the um, non-compliant rating. So what we've been doing is, we're gonna have to put in place a new portal, a new reporting system to be compliant. We have a series of proposals in place now. We're going through those and we will get them in place. Reporting for our news, I'm Marlena Leonard. The local baseball association getting excited for a major international tournament set for December. Meanwhile, track legend Frank Rutherford honored by a local business. Marcellus Hall is up now with a check on sports. Marcellus. All right, thanks, Italia. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcella Saul. Well, after hosting the Babe Ruth Little League Tournament this past summer, the Bahamas now are getting set to host the Under-23 Compaube Bay Tournament, which will take place at the new baseball stadium, which is soon to be completed. Meanwhile, the Bahamas Baseball Association executives pretty excited as they talked about exactly that on a local edition of The Locker Room. Let's take a look. With the new National Baseball Stadium nearing completion, Bahamas Baseball Association executives are gearing up to host the Compabe Under-23 Championships, which will take place here in New Province in December. With a total of seven teams expected to be participating, including the host squad Bahamas, Bahamas Baseball Association Secretary General Theodore Sweeting excited about what's ahead. Yeah. We have the CBC, which is the Caribbean Baseball Cup. Yeah. I want everybody to realize this is going to be the first time in the history of baseball in this country that we'll be hosting a qualifier, which is the CAC qualifier on Bahamian soil. Meanwhile, yesterday, triple jumper Frank Rutherford, the country's first ever medal winner at the Olympics in 1992, honored by Sunshine Holdings with the naming of a new subdivision in his honor. The new Rutherford Close will be named as a tribute to his performance in those Olympic Games and also a recognition of everything else he's done in terms of the Bahamas for sports. Rutherford, who attended the ceremonies via Zoom, talking about the honor and how he felt about just that. So I am, I am honored and I'm so I mean, you guys can't tell it. I'm overwhelmed, and I thank you, I'll walk home. I thank you, 
you know, everybody with knowledge, you know, this this has been uh, bestowed upon me today, and and uh, I, I appreciate it so much. Now, also at yesterday's naming ceremony was the Minister of Youth, Sports, and Culture, the Honorable Mario Bolek, who thanked Arawak Homes for exactly what they'd done provide quality, affordable housing for hundreds of Bahamian families while honoring the accomplishments of great Bahamians. Arawak Homes Limited made the decision to celebrate the legacy of Olympian Frank Rutherford. And that is your look at sports here on this Tuesday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Italia. Still ahead on our news tonight, Greg is back in the weather center tracking the tropics as Hurricane Ian moves north. And later, the story of youth empowerment with the formation of a new mentorship program. That's coming up when our news... Welcome back to our news. We are tracking activity in the tropics as Hurricane Ian moves north. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is back in the weather center now with your extended forecast. Greg. Yeah, thanks again, Natalia. Uh, welcome back, everybody, for our final look of weather. We are tracking two areas in the tropics. Uh, small disturb area of um, showers and disorganized thunderstorms out there in the open Atlantic. The National Hurricane Center giving that a medium chance for formation. But of course, all eyes are now on Ian, which is now a major hurricane, packing winds of 120 20 miles per hour, moving towards the north around 10 miles per hour. Tropical storm warnings now in effect for Bimini, Grand Bahama, and other portions of the Northwest Bahamas as the system has jogged more towards the uh, east. And it's going to bring, bring, be bringing us some tropical storm conditions across the Northwest Bahamas portions of that. Rain bands associated with the system will continue to move across our chain of islands in the Northwest and portions of the Central Bahamas. Flooding is expected across most of those islands. Of course, tornadic activity associated with the rain bands will also be a possibility. And once again, strong winds anywhere from 39 miles per hour up to about 73 miles per hour expected, mainly confined to the extreme western side of the, the Bahamas and Northwest Bahamas. Impacts with this system, once again, lots of rainfall expected across the northwest Bahamas and portions of the central Bahamas. Bulk of the rainfall will remain mostly across Florida, and that system will continue to track towards it, making landfall somewhere across central Florida. Boating conditions, small craft operators in the northwest Bahamas, we're asking you to remain in port. Tropical storm conditions expected. Southeast to south winds at 20 to 30 knots. Increasing tomorrow, those winds will be gusting higher seas, six, four to six feet and up to 10 feet. The high tide will be at 9.38 tonight. For the central and southeast Bahamas, a small craft caution in effect for you guys down there. East to southeast winds, 15 to 20 knots. Those winds will gust higher in those rain bands. Your seas will be running four to seven feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your extended forecast, more showers expected across our island chain, especially the North Best Bahamas through Thursday with a gradual improvement through Friday and into the weekend. Much nicer weather expected by then. That's a look at our weather. Back to you, Italia. Thanks so much, Greg. And we want everyone to remain safe. A new mentorship program for adolescents and young adults is on the way. Mentor Dr. Glenn Benneby says organizers are well on their way to launching. The program is mainly for young adults and adolescents in our country at this time. It is something that is very much needed and we encourage by the support that has been given thus far on the reception of the program. The program will be offered in the urban renewal centers and with all young people across the country once we have the official approval of the minister so to do. The mentorship program will be under the patronage of Cynthia Mother Pratt, Social Services Minister Obi Wilchum calling the program very progressive. We have issues with young men, we have issues with young women in our country. We have issues generally with uh, causing our children to have the wherewithal to be able to exist or coexist in this world community. Let's look at our issues, let's yes. address our issues, let's yes. fix these problems uh, because if we do that our country is much better. Yes. 
Thank you for joining our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Natalia Hall. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.